All right. So continuing our discussion of lines, there's really two more types of lines that we can have in the xy plane. We've described almost all types of lines except for two. We can have vertical lines or we can have horizontal lines. With horizontal lines, it doesn't matter how far left or how far right you move on the x-axis. The only thing that matters is you go up, in this case, or it could be down, the correct amount. So a horizontal line really only specifies one thing. It just says that y has to be some fixed number. It doesn't say anything about x because it doesn't care about x. Do whatever you want on the x-axis. Move wherever you like. It's just this is how you have to move on the y-axis. And if that's, what you, if that's all that you do, you know, I don't care what you do on x, you'll end up on that line. So then a vertical line, you might imagine, is very similar except it doesn't care about how far up or how far down you go. It just cares that you went right, in this case, or left, perhaps, the correct amount. That's why you just see x equals this one number. Don't care about y. Don't care how far up or down you've gone. Just move left or right by this amount. So, the trouble is, is that y equals mx plus b can't describe vertical lines. By that, I mean there's no way to write a vertical line in this form simply because the only things you're allowed to replace are M and B. You can't replace or get rid of Y. So this is why we come to what the book calls the general form of a line. If we want an equation that allows us to express any kind of line you can imagine. Horizontal, vertical, slanted, doesn't matter. Any kind of line. Well then, this is the formula you're looking for. If I want to describe a vertical line, I just let b equal zero and shift stuff around solve for x and I'll end up with x as a number. If I want a horizontal line I need to get rid of x. So I set a equal to 0 and then I've got you know an equation in y that I can solve and I'll end up with y equals a number. And if I want a slanted line like this well I can set b not this b, this is a different number here I can set this b equal to 1, move ax and c to the other side, and I've got something that looks a bit like this. Although the m and the b are now going to be a minus a and a minus c. But that's all right. Because a, b, c, m, and b are meant to be placeholders for any kind of number that you like. So this gives you any kind of line you may like. So why don't we use this? Well, because it's not convenient. This tells us everything we really want to know about a line. What's important about lines are their slopes and their y-intercepts. It's hard to see what's the slope of the line going to be you know, for any particular A, B, or C. 
So that's why we prefer the slope intercept form. But in general, we have this way of capturing every type of line that we could possibly draw.